Welcome friends and viewers to episode 43. This is the penultimate look at the series of multi-screen game and watches from Nintendo. Please join me in reviewing today's star, the adventure-themed game, Gold Cliff. Gold Cliff is a multi-screen game and watch in the 58th in the series issued by Nintendo. Gameplay is quite complex for an LCD game and is all about collecting treasure, Indiana Jones style. I'd argue that the format has clear overtures of Super Mario Bros., even down to the use of the crab-like character, Claw Grip. Equally it has moments that conquer up other similar platform games such as Climber or perhaps even more accurately Ice Climber. But the platform climbing setup and jump style has me thinking this feels an awful lot like one of my favorites, Mega Man. The player controls an archaeologist and he climbs or scales disappearing platforms in an ancient ruin. Moving between the lower to upper screens, one has to ignore the wide gap between screens at times as the jump distance can look impossible. However interestingly the player can use an extra high jump if needed by holding down the jump button while moving. Surprisingly the complexity I mentioned earlier extends to the fact there are 144 levels to play through, and these are set in 24 different worlds, which is further broken down into sets of 4 levels, with the first 3 levels requiring the player to grab a key on the right side of the ruins and take that key to the top left to progress. In the 4th level of each set, the player must grab a sword on the left side of the ruins and take it to the top. At the top of the ruins, an enemy boss will appear and will be moving back and forth. To defeat it, the player must press up on the D-pad to stab the enemy when it is directly above the player, through a small gap. Each level is timed, and when the timer hits 30, crabs begin to appear, and will result in a miss or lost life if one of these touches the player. Gold Cliff was released in 1988, making it the last game and watch to be released before the original grey-cased, green-screen DMG Game Boy. Interestingly this was the first game and watch to include a continue button, which starts the player at the level they left off on the last time they played, albeit with a score loss penalty. Gold Cliff was only sold under the pocket size brand logo. And interestingly was never released in Japan. Another anomaly, likely due to the brand new continue function, is the lack of either a player mode A, or a player mode B option that I'm sure we've all grown accustomed to. Here we see a complete open box console with instructions, stickers, caution sheets and batteries, alongside the retail shipper, the carton that once contained 10 brand new games. Here we see some actual gameplay, the countdown, shown in the bottom right hand side has already started. It starts with 50 seconds. When there is only 30 seconds remaining on the countdown the pesky crabs, similar to claw grip will begin to appear, these are the only things in this game that can kill you. Jump over them, jump up on a platform, but avoid them at all costs. Once the timer has expired, and perhaps surprisingly, you do not lose a life, at this point it's simply for additional bonus points if you finish the set with time remaining. Watching our hero here on the screen, we can see he has just completed the second key recovery and has opened two chests in this set so far. Perhaps struggling a little bit initially to find a suitable platform to get started, our player needs one more key to open the last chest of this set, it's towards the top right hand side of the upper screen. Once he has achieved this you'll see a sword appear over on the left hand side. And there we see the last treasure chest unlocked. Now let's watch him get that sword. With some initial poor luck and lack of availability with platforms to begin with here. It looks like he might be in a little trouble. No, we're good, I can see several appear now. Oh. But he misses this time too. No, wait, it's okay, he's got the sword. Okay it's been thrown up to the top of the screen, near the enemy boss, and is now ready to use. Sadly that's cost him a life. So as you can see the sword is waiting at the top, near the box up on the right hand side. Our player needs to get up there and recover it. This is so he can finish this set by stabbing the boss from below. And frustratingly yet another life is lost. We've got only one life left to finish this now. Okay with a little extra luck we can recover the sword, climb back up and complete our mission. And at last we have the sword. And the platform disappears and our player falls down yet again, leaving the sword at the top. Remembering that this is now a sudden death situation, our player is attempting to climb once again. And he's done it. The boss is dead and we've cleared this round. The score in the bottom right corner shows a total of 210 points, we only have a single life left as we continue. Well, that was the gameplay, for an LCD game I'm pretty impressed. What do you guys think? Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, but please join me next week, where we will be looking at the very last multi-screen game and watch ever released by Nintendo, 
and it's a really big title, The Legend of Zelda.